Good morning and welcome to Converge X. This is our series of virtual fireside chats between some of the most respected leaders across different industries. These chats follow on from our flagship Converge event, which we held a couple of weeks ago and which you can watch on demand on the Converge website. My name is Charles Green. I'm part of the marketing team here at Clubant, and I'm delighted to welcome you all to today's session. We are living in extraordinary times and the role of technology is ever more important in successfully navigating this changing world. That's why today we've brought together Clubant's CEO and co-founder, Marty Migoya, together with our guest, Justin Skinner, the CIO at Smile Direct Club. Justin has over 15 years of experience in the IT industry leading teams to create high impact digital initiatives. He has helped Smile Direct Club create a highly innovative approach to using technology to bring services directly to consumers in the oral care industry. Smile Direct Club has helped over a million of its members throughout the world. Previously, he was the vice president of IT at Adidas, where he helped the company realize record top line growth objectives. And Globant CEO and co-founder Marty Magoya needs little introduction. He started Globant back in 2003 together with three friends. This initial idea to transform the business and technology services industry has now become an organization with over 12,000 employees in 16 countries around the world. We are very proud here at Globant to provide digital and cognitive transformations for the world's top brands, helping them become disruptors in their own industries. And just before we kick off the discussion, um, just a very quick note for housekeeping. Um, if you want to ask a question during the discussion, please do so uh, using the Q&A. We would love to hear from you and we will have some time at the end to take a few questions. So without any further ado, I want to pass it over now to Martin to kick off the discussion. Martin, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Justin, for uh, joining us today. I think it's a great opportunity to have a leader like you, you know, uh, in our uh, ConvergeX conversations and fireside, fireside chat conversations. Um, and um, it's really interesting what's going on in this, uh, in this industry. I mean, you guys are kind of disrupting and reinventing a, a space uh, that, uh, of dental care. Uh, and well, you will define it better than me, but um, you're reinventing a space uh, and you are like changing the whole paradigm around how to uh, how to put your teeth in order. And um, uh, I know that you have a direct uh, a direct relationship with your customers, uh, which is something that is totally different from from all the industry players out there. And uh, my first question go, uh, goes into how do we how do you intend? Uh, to create that seamless and enjoyable experience uh, to build brand loyalty during, you know, uh, this new disruption that you are creating. So that's the first one. Thank you very much, Justin, for coming. Yeah. Yeah. Great to be here and uh, good to see your face and connect Martin as always. Always love talking with you. Um, yeah. And maybe just a quick context around Smile Direct Club's business model, I think is important for context and then I'm happy to answer that question. So yeah, Smile Direct Club, at Smile Direct Club, um, we're disrupting the industry of that traditional orthodontia, right? Where you go to an orthodontist, they develop a treatment plan and then you regularly go in and, and get a checkup to uh, straighten your teeth. And so at Smile Direct Club, uh, we go around that process, go direct to the consumer, um, it's all done at home. You don't have to have any in-office visits. And as you can imagine, with, with COVID and the world today, um, that's becoming more and more of a desired approach. So, so that's been interesting to see evolve. Um, to answer your question more directly, I think our company was founded on this direct-to-consumer concept and is it the core value of our company to begin with and even it's just more reinforced now with, with the COVID situation. And so um, we've created a teledentistry platform, which allows us to interface uh, directly with that consumer. Um, but now with the COVID experience and not being able to leverage some of our retail storefronts, we're really looking to, um, you know, video chat technologies. So we just implemented a, a technology where a 
customer can call in, have a video chat with our dental team and see how things are going and, and get some advice and, and to move on. Um, we're heightening the communications through our CRM channel just to make sure we, um, you know, surprise and delight and over inform and stay uh, connected with our customers. And then um, we're, we're looking at uh, soon here launching a mobile app uh, just to draw the customer closer and um, to have a, com uh, you know, a personalized conversation with us, have more um, individualized treatment plan and, and a journey and experience with our company. Um, so that's what it's about. It's about how do we find personal touch points with the, com with the customer? Um, how do we individualize that um, and ensure there's great customer service? You're on, I think you're on mute, Martin. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, you have an ambitious future <laughs> at Smile Direct Club uh, to grow. And um, how do you want to maintain and foster your culture as you scale up? Um, yeah, can you repeat the, the last part of the question? You dropped out for a second there. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, how do you want to maintain and foster your culture as you scale up? You yep. have Got it. That yeah, no. yeah, great question. And, and um, actually, just a, a shout out, I think, to Globant and, and yourself. This, I think this was a main reason why we chose you as a partner, was uh, your strong culture and, and the things you're doing there. And um, I believe personally, and I think our company believes that a strong culture and empowerment of your people and engagement of your people ultimately drives greater success, greater profitability, you know, you name it. And so it's, it's hyper critical to Smile Direct Club. Um, and especially even now, it's even more important, right? We don't have those in office touch points as much anymore. It's, it's virtual. And so we're really focused on first and foremost, how do we um, preserve or reinforce the, for, uh, the culture in a virtual environment? Um, that's done in many different ways, whether it's um, over communicating, uh, doing these fireside chats, we're actually doing them um, with our senior leadership team within Smile Direct Club. Um, and just making it a topic of conversation amongst our, our leadership team. I make sure, you know, we have a, at least a half an hour block in my senior leadership team meetings to just discuss culture and engagement and retention and just making sure it's top of mind. Um, but then, yeah, as, as we scale, the problem becomes harder, right? Because there's, there's more and more people. And I, I personally believe um, actually the model that, that you've exhibited at Globant is the best way to do that, right? So it's about empowerment of your, your people, establishing your, your, you know, your cultural values and principles. Um, and then leadership is really there to just support and remove roadblocks and get people out of the way. Um, I love how you guys draw your um, uh, uh, org charts right upside down with the, the leaders on the bottom and the individual contributors on the top. So that's what I think it's about, right? Um, empowerment, trust, um, that's, that's how you scale a culture, um, ensure it stays intact. I heard uh, also, Justin, that you, have a, that you have a podcast that you share with your employees. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, at Smile Direct Club, kind of insider, kind of funny insider information. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. At Smile Direct Club, um, everything has some funny tooth reference, right? So we call the podcast something to sink your teeth into. Um, it's a play on uh, Zach Galifianakis' uh, Between the Tooth Ferns. And what it is, is uh, every other week we do, much like we're doing now, we just do a, a, a video broadcast. It's kind of like a talk show. Um, I just do general updates about the business and what's going on. But then we have a, a focus topic, right? So we'll, we'll have maybe my VP of analytics will be on. We'll dive deep into the world of analytics and how to help them out and, and get involved. Um, and it's really taken off. And then we just try to make it fun and engaging. Like we had a great um, Halloween episode where we were silly and, and dressed up, you know, in costumes. And, um, and then at the end, we engage the audience. We have a Q and A. Um, and I really encourage people to ask um, difficult questions, or if there's any rumors out in the organization of, of, of things people are hearing, just to ask them so they can get the answer straight from me, um, clear any air. I think it was 
um, really critical to the success of, of bringing Globant um, into our organization, right? Big, big uh, effort to, to bring in a strategic partner, some maybe nerves uh, with our internal team members on, hey, am I going to lose my job? What's going on? And so we just regularly communicated through that, that podcast uh, video chat. Um, just to help calm the nerves and, and get rid of the rumors that were out there. But yeah, super fun. We love doing it. <laughs> All business has been turned upside down uh, in what a lot of people call the new normal. And um, how direct, a smart direct club is, is you know, handling these moments to, uh, to try to reshape the company? And, and how, which are the things that you are learning now? Yeah. Uh, it's it's an uh, incredible um, amount of learning that's happening now, and it's, it's forcing us to go deep and understand many areas of our business um, at a deeper level. And it's resulting in um, some new approaches on our, our business model, um, which are just going to make us, you know, bigger, better, faster, stronger. I think I think what we're learning. Um, I think there's two things, right? There's how we run the company and then there's how do we best leverage um, the market and our customers. Uh, let's talk about, you know, the market and the customers. What we're learning is the best way to engage virtually. We're learning about, you know, what are the tricks um, to have better conversion, to have better M NPS scores, a better customer experience when you're not able to uh, physically interact with the customer. Um, so most of our learnings are in that space. Also, um, getting really intelligent around how to deploy um, a retail fleet, right, for, for um, highest utilization and optimization in the marketplace. And so we don't cannibalize, um, you know, each other. And, and we have true incrementality when we reopen our, our retail stores. So that's been a huge focus for us on, on the, the commercial side. Internal in the company, I think it's been really interesting to see it play out because we did have an issue where it felt like remote team members were just on, not on the same level as team members that could join us in the office. And I think what's been great about the quarantine and it's, it's sort of leveled the playing field for everyone. Uh, so everybody's equal. And we've seen a huge um, sort of re-engagement of that, that remote workforce um, a new appreciation, right, of, of what that workforce has to, to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, starting to institute company norms, like in a meeting, have your, your video on, right? Very important um, to have that face-to-face -face time. Um, talking about um, instituting quiet times during the day, so you have, you have dedicated time to catch up on your email, uh, go exercise, take a lunch, Right. We, we, we're no longer commuting to the office. So, you know, we, it's great. We don't have to drive an hour every day, uh, but now you're working during that hour. So it's important that you protect that time. Um, so just, just a lot of learning around how do you, how do you work as a virtual scaled company and, and what things can we employ um, to make it easier for everybody involved. Thank you. I got you on mute again, Martin. You're still getting used to the uh, new virtual work environment. <laughs> I'm not clearly, you know, not getting used to. It. Um, uh, I, I'm seeing at Globan, like, you know, many, many changes happening and also in our personal life. Uh, many of those changes are here to stay, as you were saying before, the fact of us, you know, not needing to commute, but also needing, although we don't commute, okay, I also need that time to make couple of phone calls or whatever, or to think about or reflect about what I'm doing. And, um, uh, but many of these changes, I think, are here to stay. And uh, they won't be, you know, they won't be the same. In any case, you know, I, I don't like to talk about, you know, everything will be different because it's, it won't, because we will keep on going to the place we love, places we love, so on and so forth. And we'll keep on eating to the great restaurants that we used to, uh, if they survive. And, um, you know, uh, the other day I, when I was talking at, at, at the, at the, you know, um, at the Converge event in the, in the main section, I was thinking about which are the legacies 
that this huge, unique moment is creating for, for us. Which are those legacies that are, are being, you know, uh, here forever for you and for your company? Right, right. Yeah, it's a great question. And um, I think my thoughts on that have been evolving as this goes on. Um, I know for me personally, first and foremost, it's really reinforced the importance of um, family and personal relationships. Um, you know, when every, when everything went into quarantine and all of a sudden, you know, social circles disappear or the ability to go out and to the nice restaurant goes away. Um, you know, you, you look to those close to you who you trust and who, um, you know, you know, who are abiding by your same standards, um, so that you can get together and have those social interactions. And so for me, it just really reinforced the importance of, um, when you are with those people being present, being in the moment, right, put, put the phone down, put the work away, um, and, you know, give that same intention and importance to those personal relationships as we do every day um, at the workplace. Um, so that's definitely a legacy for me personally, I think, uh, that will, will um, be forever going forward, even if the world returns to normal. I think that's really been solidified for me. Um, for the company, uh, I think what we're starting to see is a devaluation of an always in office culture and a shift to a culture of something we call moments that matter. And so we're really going to design our workplace around um, a collaborative space where team members be very intentional about going to that place um, for moments that matter, right? To kick off a project, to collaborate and work through a challenge, to have a town hall or a staff meeting, um, rather than just being in the office to be in the office, right? So I think that's gonna be a huge legacy that remains um, at Smile Direct Club going forward. And then um, I think it's also infused now into the DNA of, um, always looking to what is that potential next, next risk or business continuity thing that we need to, um, you know, be, uh, be prepared for. I think in a hyper growth company, right, you're very revenue focused, growth focused, go, 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 go. And sometimes those things get missed. And, and so now we're starting to see in our, our discussions on a more regular basis, um, focus around being prepared, uh, being ready to shift, setting the organization up so you can quickly pivot, quickly shift, reduce as much bureaucracy and process as possible uh, to do so, um, so that we can continue to, to thrive and, and be successful, whatever comes our way. Justin, um, how are you seeing, you know, the, uh, this new phase of the pandemic in the U.S.? I mean, overall, how are you seeing the recovery happening uh, how are you seeing the mood of the people in general uh, of what's going on, you know, uh, in the in the U.S. right now, in particular within the cities in which you operate? Yeah, uh, it's very, very strange time um, and interesting to watch. And I think, you know, the there's various media outlets um, that all have their own stories, right? So I think depending on uh, where you get your news, first of all, you probably have your own view of what's going on. And so I try to look at all these different sources and, and make my own opinion. Um, Nash, so I'm based in, in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, you know, Nashville is known for, uh, you know, freedom and, and I'm going to do what I want and uh, independence um, as compared to, let's, you know, say a, a more uh, liberal state in America. Um, and that's what's great about America, right? Is all these different environments and, and, and cultures. And so specifically in Nashville, I think what we're seeing um, at, at first, it was uh, not too much paying attention to the issue and, and being a little cavalier, right? Still going about daily life. Um, but we're starting to see a spike um, in, in COVID here. And I think it's starting to um, come to realization of the population here that 
you know, to be a little more careful um, and respect quarantine. Where we see the opposite, right? In other states, it's, it's complete lockdown and, and, and stuff like that. Um, I think uh, there, there's some interesting stuff that I've been reading about um, the data of COVID and, and some interesting things, go, things going on about, you know, government um, incentivizing hospitals to uh, maybe report COVID deaths or things um, that get them more funding. So I think there's some interesting stuff going on there. So, so for me, I think what's most important uh, for America right now is figuring out a way to make the data as transparent as possible and as accurate as possible so that people can make the decision for themselves um, on what to do next. Um, so that's, that's just my personal opinion on what we need to do in America. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting. I think it's so varied in this country um, how the different states are reacting. And it, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out too. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm very curious about, you know, um, how this, uh, how all this situation um, will affect, you know, the, the next, you know, workspace. And um, one of the questions is, is how is your take in terms of the, of the next steps of your work, workspace? I mean, what, what you are thinking about the next generation workspace for Smile Direct Lab? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, again, I think it's around that, that designing, designing around that moments that matter concept. Um, but then from a technology lens, um, you know, be, it's very important that we have the, the various audio visual capabilities equipped in all of our conference rooms and collaborative spaces that just make it easy for um, those in the office to um, have virtual presence with those not in the office, right? Um, ma making that a seamless, easy experience uh, to be used. Um, I think less you know, cubicle, desk, 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 desk type of design space. Again, more collaborative places to be creative and, and, and come together to work on a problem. Um, I think, speaking from a virtual uh, standpoint too, it's been, we need to figure out ways. There, there's these issues of like, uh, they call it uh, webcam fatigue, I think is, is what they call it, right? So you, you're always looking at yourself to see you know, am I, am I sitting upright or what do, you know, what are my social cues? So figuring out ways maybe to um, enhance that technology to reduce that burden, uh, that mental burden on people. Um, and then are there things that we can employ from that learning in the office, right? Um, whether there's more tranquil spaces or serenity that you, you could bring in the office as well, just to sort of maintain that balance. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I think it's about. It's, it's more, let's, let's create a space where people could come to, come together, create, be inspired, um, and not feel, you know, like I'm just going to, to work and, and on the grind. Good. Um, to close, I will give you, you know, the opportunity to address our audience on why, if they want to do an orthodontia, they should go with Smile Direct Lab instead of any of our competitors. I'm sorry about that. It was, it was, it was totally outside the schedule, but you know, I think it, it's, <laughs> it's worth the time. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate the platform. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of reasons, I think, to do Smile Direct Club. Um, so first and foremost, so our, our mission as a company is to bring access to care, affordable access to care to as many people in the world as possible. Right. So if you look at a traditional orthodontia treatment, you know, it's going to be 5,000 U.S., 8,000 U.S. Um, by the time you're done with treatment. Our treatment is 1850. Right. So right off the bat, you're already well under the cost of, um, of uh, typical orthodontia treatment. Um, and given the COVID situation, um, you don't need to go in for a checkup into an orthodontia office on a regular basis. So versus traditional orthodontia, I think it's a no brainer. Um, now, when you talk about our direct competitors, right, our, our other B2C competitors, um, what Smile Direct Club has is what we call uh, vertical integration. 
And right, we're the only uh, D2C company that, that has this integration. So everything from, you know, taking in your scan and the interaction up front to purchasing the aligners to creating your treatment plan to manufacturing your treatment plan, we control the process uh, the whole way. So it gives us uh, more flexibility and more control um, around what we can do with our treatment plants, with what we could do with our manufacturing, um, and being able to service you more quickly than other companies because we can we control, um, you know, when when we could print and produce something or when we can create a treatment plan for you, as opposed to relying on third parties. Um, and our scale, um, you know, we're much 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 bigger than our closest competitor. Um, so the scale means you're going to have the team to support you through your, your journey, the dental team and the customer service team, um, to make sure they're there and, and to make sure you're taken care of along the way. Are you planning to come to Latin America? Yes. Uh, I, you know, I, last Christmas actually was down in, in Chile and Peru, had a wonderful time. Uh, but I want to get down to Argentina and, and come visit you and, and the crew down there. So once this once the quarantine lifts a bit, would love to get down there. And smile direct. Oh, you're talking about the the company. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Both. yeah, yeah, both. Um, yeah, both. Yeah, we've um, we we've been looking at um, Brazil, um, Argentina, um, and a couple other countries. Um, just working through some of the the regulatory and, and logistical plans. Um, but yeah, at some point soon, we should be down in South America. That would be really amazing. Justin, thank you very much for, for these moments. Um, I really enjoyed the conversation, very interesting. And uh, really looking forward to see you soon, hopefully you know, in the US um, when everything gets open again. Uh, and uh, congratulations for all the success on what you're doing and, and, and you know, uh, what we are building together. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, thank you. And we actually, we have time now um, for some Q&A from the audience. Um, and actually, I think the first question that we received from the audience is actually very closely related to, um, to, the, to the previous question from Martin, uh, really about how you, you know, the reasons why uh, you might be interested in, uh, in Smile Direct Club. And you spoke a little bit about there, but Justin, about you know, how you've you know, changing the industry, how you've disrupted things. And the question is, so what are the steps that if you know, I want to take to follow in your for, in your footsteps to disrupt a legacy industry. What are some of the steps that you perhaps want to take? Also, perhaps from a technology perspective, what are the kind of steps you want to take to disrupt a a, a legacy industry? Yeah, you know, I think um, also encourage you to listen to uh, Elon Musk and a lot of the things he talks about with um, you know his companies Tesla and SpaceX and um, and that, but you know, I think I think first and foremost, it's about um, you. You need to be willing to challenge the status quo and and have the fortitude to keep pushing forward despite everything being against you, right? Because there's going to be some institution that does not want you to succeed, um, and it's very very important that you push through that. Um, not taking no as an answer right so finding a way to say yes is very important um and then this is what elon musk speaks about it's a i think looking at the problem or the challenge and breaking it down into its most fundamental elements so that you can work backwards from there or sort of build up from those fundamental elements on how to how to accomplish the task or how to achieve the goal um, because if you start at the top, the high level of what exists today and what's out there today, um, you might miss the opportunity or you might miss kind of fundamentally what's, what's broken about um, the system you're trying to disrupt. Um, so I think uh, doing those things from a business standpoint is what makes sense. From a technology standpoint, I think it's, it's definitely a challenge in a hyper growth disruptive company because technologists tend to want to um, do things right. You know what I mean? So like making sure it's perfectly engineered and the solution is everything it needs to be and it's of highest quality. Um, but if we do that, you're going to miss out on the opportunity. You're going to miss out on, out on the, va the value um, that you could capture. And so as a technologist and a leader of a technology team, 
It's about um, A, setting up your teams and how they work to be agile fast and pivot, setting up your technology architecture so that um, you can adjust quickly, uh, you can plug and play new solutions, you could, you could change features um, rapidly, um, and just being okay with, with throwing stuff away, right? Like you're going you're gonna to work on stuff, you're going to learn more information, um, and you're going to change, change your direction and throw it away, and that's fine. Um, and then the last thing I would say is um, uh, data, 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 right? So we have a, a truth that's Mel Direct Club called uh, Data Discussion Decision. And what it means is take your subjective ideas out of the equation, let the data drive the discussion, let the data give you the decision, and do that relentlessly every day. Um, and it's okay if your opinion was wrong, uh, just follow the data. Okay, super, thank you. And just very quickly, I know we're running out a little bit of time. Um, final question to you, to, Mar to you, Martin. Um, you've spoken a lot about augmented collaboration um, uh, today and also at, at Converge a couple of weeks ago. Can you provide us some color about how you can perhaps scale this through an enterprise? It was for me. Okay. Yes, sorry, Martin. I see you, Martin. No. No, I see. I see that there's a lot of things that that are happening that can be expanded. I mean, uh, as we mentioned the other day, um, starting by how you augment the way in which people get connected um, before it was at the office and it, before it was at the coffee machine, right? And now uh, it, it doesn't happen anymore. So, as Justin was mentioning before, I mean, those moments that you have for you, either for going to have a coffee or on a, on the commute, talking to the person that you wanted to talk, talks are unexpected. Those moments just vanished, and and it is very important to be able to cope with this new uh, reality. But use technology to generate, you know, those moments in a in a virtual way. Um, so that's one thing. Then also how we uh, how we uh, how we do to, to augment the capabilities of our people. Just yesterday, we got awarded with the patent on the augmented coding concept, um, which is really, really a, a amazing. And uh, how to use that technology to be able to uh, connect the, uh, the, the, the developers that are creating the code to be uh, better, to have like a much, you know, important, uh, uh, connection with the reality of what's going on and not just having the guy alone at their place, uh, you know, without any help from any senior person, which is, again, what's happening at the office. Um, so in every single aspect of, you know, understanding what's going on at the office, now we need to be able to replace those moments with technology. And that's how you need, I, I think, you know, the scale up of, you know, uh, of the new reality. And even if we come back to the office, uh, those, those things can be augmented. I mean, those moments can be augmented. Those virtually generated moments can be much better than, you know, the, the ones we had before. So I think, I think we are in the verge of something totally new. Uh, and I think we are in, in, in the, we have the opportunity right now with this situation to embrace those technologies and take the collaboration to the next level. I don't know, Justin, if you want to add something into that idea. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you hit it spot on. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, excellent. Thank you. And I know we're now out of time, so I'd like to bring this session to a close. Um, thank you to everyone who joined us today, and thank you to Martin, and a special thank you to you, uh, Justin, as well, to our guest. We would love to continue this conversation, so please feel free to reach out to us uh, about any of the topics that we've spoken about today. Uh, also, make sure to subscribe to our site, Stay Relevant, where we'll be sharing the news of upcoming Converge and Converge X events. Uh, and with that, I wish you all a very pleasant rest of the day. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Justin. <laughs>